Think Big is a, a, a by Ben Carson. It's a book by Ben Carson, and I did some research last night, and all of these ideas are his. I'm not claiming these as my own, and uh, I'm, I'm going to share what Think Big stands for, okay? And uh, um, John Hollis, who was supposed to be here giving this talk, is, is, he's had a stroke, and I hope you'll keep him in your prayers, and uh, those are big shoes to fill. So in Thinking Big, I thought, well, I know John would quote Ben Carson as he often does, and so I thought it would be appropriate to do a little research on that and figure out what Think Big was all about. And the T in Think Big is for talent. The H is for honesty. The I is for insight. The N is for nice. The K is for knowledge. The B is for books. The I is for in-depth learning, and the G is for God. So I've got $5 here, and I want to see if you guys have been paying attention. Anybody can win this $5. Were you paying attention? What does, what does the T stand for in Think Big? I just said it. Talent, here you go, here's five dollars for you. Come get your five bucks. All right, we all have talent. Talent is God given. We all have abilities. All right, I, I don't have a real talent for education or, or, or knowledge. I'm, I'm not the best reader. Um, I, the book I read the most is the Bible. I don't read very often. I'm not, uh, I don't claim to be some scholar, okay? Um, every, everybody here is very impressive with degrees and, and, and their achievements, and, and I'm humbled by that. Um, but I graduated from SCI. Does anybody know where SCI is? SCI Sussex Correctional Institute. A lot of these guys graduated from Yale. I graduated from jail. Okay, and uh, thank God I've been sober 25 years. I've never had to go back there and experience that again. But uh, that's just through the grace of God. And which leads me to my next uh, uh, point. Um, the H is for what? Who remembers what the H is for? Honesty. Come on, here's another five dollars. Come on. All right. Here you go. Here you go. All right. So H is for honesty. And uh, honesty, we we've got to. Uh, we all have skeletons. They're going to come back. They're, they're going to come back to haunt us. And uh, for a long time in my life, I kind of didn't want people to know about my past and who I was and what I had been through because I was ashamed. And I thought that, you know, people would look down upon me or, or, or not want to associate with me if they knew that I had gone through that terrible time in my life as a teenager and a young person. And uh, there's a story I like to tell about a duck. And little Johnny was at his grandmother's house and he was shooting a slingshot. And he kept trying to shoot birds all day long and he missed. And so he saw grandma's pet duck going across the yard and he pulls back the slingshot and he shoots grandma's pet duck right in the head and kills it dead. And he goes inside and he tells his little sister, "Don't." his little sister sees what happened, don't tell grandma what happened. And so grandma, asked Susie to help with the dishes later that night and she says, no, Grandma, I think Johnny wants to help you do the dishes. And Grandma says, or, or Johnny says, no, I really don't. And Susie says, remember the duck. So Johnny does the dishes and then the next day it was cleaning the house and Johnny's doing all of Susie's work and every time he says, no, I don't want to do it, Susie says, remember the duck. So eventually he finally says, Fesses up. He says, Grandma, I have a confession to make. I killed your pet duck, and I'm sorry. It was an accident. And Grandma says, Johnny, it's okay. I saw her when you did it. I forgave you immediately. I love you anyway. I was just wondering how long you're going to let Susie make a slave out of you. And who does Grandma represent? God. God knows all, sees all. We don't hide anything from him, right? 
So it doesn't matter that, you know, we think we're getting away with something. God knows it, and he's who we have to answer to anyway. So that just is a nice story I like to tell about honesty. And, and when we, we confess what we've done and, and we admit it and we move on and try to do better, how we're forgiven and loved. And Susie, you know, that devil, he just wants to tell us how rotten we are, you know. And uh, so anyway, uh, that's a story about honesty. The next I was, anybody remember the next I? She she studied too last night. She knew this was happening. Uh, come on, here you go. <laughs> There's five dollars for you. Insight, insight, um, insight. We should listen and learn from those who have gone before us, and that's pretty simple. You know, if you want to open a restaurant or if you want to um, uh, start a business, you know, a good thing to do is to, is to go and find somebody who's actually done it and talk to them. They, they're going to be very happy to help you, and if they're a successful person, they want to give it away. And that's, I'm going to get to that later, but that, that's very important. Seek insight in anything that you're doing. What's the end for? Now, the $5 here. The end. Come on, let's hear from this side. Nice. nice. Here you go, man. Here you go. The end is for nice. So we should we should be nice in everything we do, right? So we should put others first. You know, try to brighten other people's day. Uh, try to be cheerful to them because we don't know what they're dealing with, and and putting their needs above ours always makes uh, my life seem better. And if I can help try to lift someone else up. Knowledge. Oh, I gave it away. Knowledge. Who knows what the K is for? Knowledge. Here we go. $5 for you. All right. <laughs> so knowledge. Uh, and Dr. Carson shared something I, that I really agree with that. Uh, when he was talking about his think big uh, theory and he said things don't matter knowledge is what gives us the ability to acquire anything so you know seeking knowledge is more important than, than seeking possessions or, or other things so how do we seek knowledge what should we what should we read and, and this is the next one this is five dollars what does B stand for well, Bible's good. That's the best. That's the best one. Book. There you go. Here's five dollars for you. So, <laughs> so, B is for books. Okay. He said this. He said watching videos, or uh, uh, watching videos, or, or listening to to books. It's like kind of like watching somebody work out and think you're gonna get in shape, right? He said, if we want to get in shape, we got to get in there and do the work. So I'm speaking to myself here. I need to spend more time in the books, and, um, and, and that definitely will help. Now, I, this is a tough one. Who, who knows what I stands for? Incomplete. <laughs> Good try. Good try, but that's not it. I, anybody got I? In? Inconvenient. <laughs> No. All right. I'm a, I think it's for in-depth learning, but hey, since you tried twice, I'm going to give you the $5. Come on up here and give it. Since nobody got that, you had two pretty good guesses there. You can have the 5 bucks on that one. I is for in-depth learning. Here you go, sir. Well, thank you for paying. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So, in-depth learning... A, a superficial learn, a superficial learning people. That's like myself, okay. I, I have to admit, I, I'm, I, I'm lacking in this area in a lot of ways. Superficial learning people, they will cram real hard and study just to pass a test, but then they won't retain anything, okay. And, and you know, I'm guilty of that in many ways. But an in-depth learner is where knowledge becomes part of who you are. What you, what you study and what you learn and the knowledge you try to acquire, it becomes part of who you are. And I think there are areas in my life that, that 
I have had success being an in-depth learner, particularly in the Word and trying to share uh, God, the, the grace of God and what He's done in my life uh, has become part of who I am. And if you don't believe it, just ask anybody to say, yeah, he, he just... They'll tell you Jesus loves you all day long, and he'll never shut up about God. So, <laughs> hey, Cody, come, come up here and win $5, Cody. I can't win five dollars. The last G stands for what? You already got five. Let's, there you go, Cody. Here you go. $5 for you. All right. <laughs> How you doing, man? Doing good, man. All right, buddy. So, the last G is for God. And, um, you know, the, the world today is trying to replace God, right? They're trying to move God out and replace it with other things. But what are we going to replace God with? Now, what are we going to replace him with? People? I mean, how flawed are we, you know? If we try to replace God with people, where will we be? And if we acknowledge the need for God, he will help us. And Dr. Carson shared that, and, and that just... Uh, really has impacted me and it wasn't until I got on my knees and nothing else worked the drugs and the alcohol quit working all of the chasing girls you know that they, they'd had enough of me you know and, and it wasn't you know I was at the point in my life where I was about to end it and I just wanted to die and I said God I need you and, and I got on my knees and I prayed and I asked for help and forgiveness and it just you know, I felt like a weight lifted off my shoulders, and I got off the floor. And, and in, in the past 25 years, my life has been blessed beyond measure. A beautiful wife who's over here, and my daughter and, and son. And um, I'm sorry I get a little emotional every time I share. Um, <clears throat> but the, the thing is that we can't be too big for God. You know, we just uh, have to put him first and... and uh, you know, my Think Big idea today, you know, I've shared the whole Think Big concept, but what I want to share about Thinking Big is, is uh, our company went through the, you know, we opened in 2002, uh, Home Team Realty, and I got into real estate because you only have to go to school for three months. You know, it wasn't like some PhD that took like, you know, five years or seven years to get it. I was like, man, you don't have to go to school for three months. And you can have a career and do something great, you know, make make good money. I was like, I'm in. So I went and I got my real estate license and, and um, uh, I started my own business. By um, Let me back up a little bit. By 1999, I've been blessed to become one of the top realtors in the nation under 30 years old. And I was on the cover of Realtor Magazine and business was booming and had signs all over town. And, you know, things were just wonderful. In 2002, I got, you know, kind of got a little big for my britches and opened my own business up. And my wife said, you know, you ought to maybe slow your roll a little bit. But now I had to have my own company, so we opened it up. And, man, by 2004, I, in 2002, I thought if we could have five agents and do five closings a month, man, that would be pretty good. And that, that would be a nice size company to have. Two years later, we had 30 agents, and some months we were doing 30 settlements a month. In two years' time, I thought I was a genius. I thought I had life all figured out. Well, then 2006, 2007, 2008 come, and I realized, well, maybe I don't know so much. <laughs> and, and this puts me back to, you know, putting God first. And, you know, I had purchased a big home on the river. We had purchased a private island that we own in the Chesapeake Bay that was called Frank's Island when we bought it. So, you know, I'm all puffed up, proud of all these things. And, and here the, the market drops, and I feel like, you know, I might lose it all. And, and I really got worried, and, and, but I got on my knees, and I prayed. And my wife, she, uh, she prayed with me and stuck with me through some tough times. And, and uh, my kids realized that money doesn't grow on trees anymore, you know. And, and so our life, I went through another period in my life where I, I really had to rely on God. And, and um, I got involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and the school board and, and sharing with the youth and uh, just trying to give back, even when I didn't have it to give. And uh, about two years ago, 
I was meeting with a good friend who owns Trinity Transport, named Chef Banning, and we were thinking about having a, you know, a, a, a lean. This falls back on this insight. Listen to those who've been there. And he has successful business, and so I said, Jeff, what can I do to help? you know, get get my business back back on his feet again. And he said, involvement, which is another good eye. Get your people involved in what you're doing and, and inspire them and, and try to help them uh, take ownership of, of your company. And so he recommended, we, we kind of, he didn't recommend it, but I kind of thought about that. And we, we discussed having a, a mission of the month where every sale we do, we would give a little back to the community. And so we started taking this money aside, and every month we give to a different cause. And we have those people come into our sales meeting, which we start with a prayer, and we give God credit first. And uh, the, 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 um, the mission of the month has become hugely successful, and we've been able to support so many things. But through that giving back, I always say you can't outgive God. So through that giving back, our company has grown immensely. And in the last two years, we've doubled in size. Our sales have doubled again. We're growing again very quickly. And it's just through that faithfulness and through giving back and doing for others and, you know, putting, putting ourselves uh, on the back burner. You know, self out of center is what Dr. Carson referred to. Take ourselves out of the center and, and focus on others. And uh, it's just, just been a huge blessing. So uh, that's the think big idea I have for today. It's nothing new. It's something that's been done for years. I, I, I don't really think that uh, I have a whole lot of original ideas. But when I, when I trust God and, and be faithful and um, give to others, the blessings come ten a thousand times. So thank you for letting me share today. God bless you.